prior to running a flash VEP test, make sure you have all the necessary equipment. This includes the right of all device, designated electrodes, and any patient preparation materials you require. When you have all the equipment and supplies, you are ready to run the test. The flash VEP test is different from the other tests usually performed with the right of all device. For this test, instead of sensor strip or corneal electrodes, you will be using a gold cup electrode along with electrode paste. You will also need reference and ground electrodes in the form of a forehead patch and ear clip respectively. Power on the device by pressing the power button on the right side of the device. Allow a few seconds for the device to properly boot. You will see a loading screen and then the main menu will come up. Before running your VEP test, you want to make sure that you're using the correct protocol. Check the bottom of the screen to confirm the protocol you are using is correct. Once you have confirmed the correct protocol, you can start the test. On the main menu, select new tests. The first window will prompt you to enter patient information. If you have the data barcode entry application software, you can use this to scan patient information. If not, you can use the joystick to enter patient ID and then the birth date. Once you enter this information, the device will move forward to a confirmation screen for both the protocol and the patient information. Click next to continue. The device will then ask you to confirm the electrode being used. It will default to the gold cup electrode for flash VEP tests. Select the electrode and continue and you will move forward to the patient preparation portion. Patient preparation for the flash VEP will be different. In order to prepare the patient, use an alcohol preparation pad on the forehead, the ear, and the back of the head. The recording electrode for the VEP test will be placed on the back of the head of the patient, located at the OZ position. The easiest way to place the OZ position is to locate the inian, which is the small protuberance on the external surface of the back of the skull near the neck. Once located, move about 2.5 centimeters or one inch above the inian to place the OZ position. This can be estimated by using your fingers. Make sure you scrub the back of the head with an alcohol preparation pad in order to clean and slightly abrade the skin. Put some paste on the gold cup electrode and place it on the OZ position. Make sure the electrode is secure and connect to the back and connected to the back of the patient's head. You can use tissue and tape to make sure it is sticking properly. Okay, I'm gonna After you have placed the electrodes, you want to ensure that each connection is placed on the proper wire. For the back of the head or the recording electrode, you want to connect it to the red cable. For the forehead patch or the reference electrode or the negative electrode, you want to place on the black cable. And finally, the ground or common electrode or the ear clip, you want to place in the green connection. Once you have all three connected and there's a good connection, you can move forward with the test. Notice that the device starts testing with the patient's right eye. Yes. You will be testing the device one eye at a time. While testing, inform the patient to keep both eyes open and you want to patch the contralateral eye. We have here eye patch. Okay. 
If you're performing a trolling based test, the screen will inform you to align the right people inside the green circle. Hold the device up to the patient's eye and make sure it is snug around the eye to prevent any light leakage around the device. Align the patient's pupil to be inside the green circle. If you're using a candela based protocol, the device will not require the pupil and you can simply hold the device up to the patient's eye and keep their pupil within the green circle. When you see the start test button appear, click on it to begin testing. The, the device will first go through a calibration process which the patient views as a series of red, green, and blue lights. Then the device will move forward to performing the flash VEP protocol. Once the device has finished collecting data, it will process it and show you a picture of the waveform on the results screen. Note that the device will let you repeat the test or move to the next step. For flash VEPs, you will want to repeat a duplicate for the test. Flash VEP responses are highly variable between patients. However, the response should remain reproducible within the same patient. Therefore, you should always duplicate a flash VEP test in order to ensure the response you are getting is in fact an electrophysiological response. After you repeat the test, it will show you both duplicates on the screen. During the actual test, you can inform the patient of their progression and how much they have left during the, for the test. You can repeat the step as many times as you'd like, and you can toggle between which sweeps you would like to keep. After you have finished testing the right eye, click on Next to move on to the left eye and repeat the same process. Do at least one duplicate for the left eye as well. Once you have finished testing, the device will save the results. Okay, we're going to do a repeat. Once you have finished the test, the device will save the results. After the results are saved and you've tested both eyes, you can go ahead and remove the electrodes from the patient and you've completed the flash VEP test. Remove the patch as well. The paste is water soluble so you can get a paper towel, wet paper towel and scrub the back of the head.